Hey, I'm Andy with Tennis Warehouse, and today I'm going to teach you how to string a tennis racket. Before you start, make sure to have all the tools you need. You'll want to have an awl and pliers to help you navigate the string through tight spaces and a set of clippers to cut the string when necessary. Now you're ready to mount the racket. Today I'll be using a Prince Neos 1000, which features a two-point mounting system. Other stringers may have a six-point mounting system, in which case consult your instruction manual for the proper way to mount the racket onto your particular stringer. Line up the top of the racket with the stringer and secure the top tightly. Make sure when you're mounting the racket that none of the grommet holes are blocked by the stringer or the clamps securing the racket to the stringer. Adjust the throat piece to the length of the racket and secure the throat. Make sure to lock the lock bar if your stringer has one or else it'll cause significant damage to the frame. Next, set the desired tension that you want to string your racket at. Today I'll be using the two-piece stringing method because it's a little more universal. Some rackets can be strung using the one-piece method, but any racket can be strung using a two-piece method. This can also be utilized for hybrid stringing. Unravel the string carefully and then inspect your string by running it through your hands looking for unwanted kinks and knots. This is especially important for natural gut where a kink can cause the string to break while stringing. While doing this, find both ends of the string and hold them in one hand. Using your other hand, work your way down the string until you find the middle. Clip it at an angle if you can as it will make the string easier to work with when trying to get it through tight spaces. If your racket has six holes in the throat like this one does, you'll start at the throat. If it has eight holes, you'll start at the top. Take both ends of one of your half sets of string and pull them through the two middle holes of the racket. Pull them through the opposite side of the frame so that just the ends come out of the holes. Grab both ends and pull together with your hands so that you'll have an equal amount of string for both sides of your mains. This is a quick and easy way to assure you have an equal amount of strings for both sides. Pull both ends all the way through and clamp one of the strings at the end that you started the racket on. Always try to clamp as close to the grommets as possible in order to minimize tension loss. Go ahead and pull tension on your first main, which will be the string that is not currently clamped. Once again, clamp as close to the grommets as possible. Once your clamp is secure, you can release tension on the crank. Continue your mains outwards from the middle. Be sure to never go more than three mains ahead of your opposite side so that you don't put unbalanced pressure on the frame. For each string, pull it through the frame, pull tension, move your clamp to the newly tensioned string, secure and release tension. As you're completing the mains, be sure to watch for skipped or shared holes. These are usually indicated by little marks on the frame or by a grommet that looks like it's aimed in the wrong direction. Make sure to know how many mains and crosses there are, as well as the skipped holes in the racket that you're stringing before you start stringing it. You can find all this information for any rackets that we currently carry on our website in the specification section on that racket's product page at TennisWarehouse.com. Once you've completed one side of the mains, you're ready to tie off that side. Make sure not to undo your clamp until you've tied the knot so that you don't lose tension on what you've just done. Look for the closest hole that you can loop back into from the outside of the frame. Pull the extra string back through the inside of the frame. To tie the knot, go down one side of the main string, up the other side and through the little loop that you've created. Pull the knot tight with your hand and repeat this process to create a double knot. Finish the other side of your mains in the same manner. Be sure to skip the proper holes and tie off on the same string as you did on the opposite side. Once you've tied off the mains, you can release the clamps and readjust them if your stringer requires it for your crosses. In order to start the crosses, we will have to tie a starting knot on one of the mains. Grab the other half of string that you set aside for your crosses and pull it through one of the grommets of a main string at the top of the frame from the outside. Pull the string through and wrap it around the main string three times. Using your other hand, grab the loops that have just been created. Bring the end of the string back towards the frame, then back through the loops you've just grabbed. Pull tight and the loop should tighten and sit flush against the inside of the frame. Now you're ready to start the crosses. Find the topmost empty hole and start there. Weave across the main strings by placing one hand under the string bed, one hand over, and putting the string in between your two middle fingers. Push the string across the string bed 
all the way until the opposing grommet. Weave the string over one string, under the next, over, under, over, under, until you reach the end. A quick way to know if you did the weave correctly is to check that your last over under is the opposite of the first. For example, if you started with an over, your last one should be an under. Pull this string all the way through, but do not pull tension. Make sure when pulling the extra string through after weaving across to keep the string moving as you pull it, or else it will create notching in the main strings. Weave the second cross and pull that one all the way through as well. Now weave your third cross. When you finish the third cross, you're going to pull the string through only a little bit of the grommet on the other side. You now have a large loop on the other side of the frame. Pull tension on the end that's going to the two crosses that you already strung previously. Pull tension and that'll tighten both the crosses above it and once again clamp as close as you can to the grommet. Then release. Now that you've clamped and released tension, you can now pull the string the rest of the way through on the third cross. One trick here is to grab the end of the string as you pull it through and don't lose it before you start the next cross or else you'll have to find the end again. Now weave your next cross, once again making sure it's the opposite of the one above it and only pull a little bit of the string through the other side of the frame, once again leaving a large loop on the other side. Pull the rest of the string through and proceed with the crosses in the same manner, always tightening the string one previous to the one that you just weaved. Continue in this manner until you've completed the crosses. Don't forget to tighten the last cross after weaving it and pulling tension on the second to last cross. After you've pulled tension and clamped the second to last cross, pull the string all the way through and pull tension in the traditional way on the last cross we are ready to tie off. Find the closest hole that allows you to fit two strings through it. Sometimes your all in pliers will be necessary here to create extra space in the grommet hole and pull the string through. Be sure to take care and not be too rough when enlarging a grommet hole or else you'll damage the frame and or the string. Tie the same knot that we did to finish the main strings. Go down one side of the string, up the other, and through the loop. Hand pull to tighten and do the same thing to create your double knot. Now you're almost done. Dismount the racket from the stringer and check it for any misweaves or accidental damage to the frame. Then clip the extra string from the knots as close as you can to the knot itself, but without cutting the actual knot. Straighten your crosses and now you're finished. Congratulations. And now you know how to string a racket. Feel free to ask any questions that you may have on our YouTube channel and be sure to come to tenniswarehouse.com for all of your stringing needs. Thanks for watching.